Gary, you've met the press. Well, reacquainted yourself with the press that you probably know from before. Do you feel like the job's underway now? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always difficult when you <clears throat> when you join a club uh, and effectively you've been away for, for a period of time. Um, so it was nice to get back in. I actually came back in Monday uh, to do some work. I've been working away anyway, so, so it's not a massive problem. But certainly today, um, to get to know everyone, to meet a lot of people in all the departments and say hello to, to a few new faces um, and obviously to get to the ground. So, so yeah, it feels like the job's actually underway. Um, so I'm really excited. Did you get much time to rest and recuperate when you were away or were you working around the clock? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately for a manager, you know, you don't need to necessarily physically rest. I think it's more mentally not having to go in every day and not having to think about um, the usual things you have to think about. But uh, most summers I've spent trying to build a team. Most summers I've spent looking at recruitment um, because I've always had a strong arm in, in, in that. Um, and most summers I spend planning anyway because that's the type of person I am. So uh, whether I'm on holiday, whether I'm at home, it doesn't really make any difference. So uh, I've had a nice little break and it's important for the family, I think, always to to give them a little bit of time, um, you know, I'm ready to go. I know you earlier said you've watched the games, you've looked and analysed the players. Does that give you a good grounding now for, for when the guys do return in a couple of weeks' time? Yeah, I think the aim is always um, to start the first day of pre-season with a little bit of um, knowledge of a player, or a lot of knowledge of the players and knowledge of a team previously. How you see, The only reason you watch the previous games is to see the things you want to get out of it that you might be able to... Uh, put into the team for the season after, you know. So, um, but of course, it's a different manager, as tactics and a different team that you might select. So, um, but certainly having that information and having that knowledge um, and looking at the players you think can can help us achieve what we want to achieve next season, I think certainly certainly helps. I know. Before you went away, you said you wanted to speak to one or two of the guys. Have you managed to do that? Yeah, I spoke to one or two. It was quite interesting because uh, when I was away in Portugal, I. I uh, inadvertently bumped into Ryan Shawcross in the supermarket. I can, I can openly state that he did only have fruit in his basket, which I was particularly impressed with. Uh, I was hoping to see a few beers in there to tell him off. But uh, I had a little chat with, with Ryan. I spoke to Joe Allen as well. Uh, I'll try to speak to a few of the other players. I won't, I won't ring every single player because I don't think there's any need for that. Uh, but I'll try and get a, a feel for uh, some of the issues, some of the things they, they felt last season. I think it's always important. I'm very player centred, you know, I'll speak to the players a lot, I'll, have a, I'll try to have a good relationship with those players, um, you know, I like the man management side of a job, you know, so uh, it's important that I try to build some of those relationships mm. early, so that when we do come back, um, you know, there's a bit of familiarity as well. And Ryan and Joe, two players of undoubted Premier League quality, are they two guys that you'd like to, to keep within the squad for the next year? Yeah, season? I've mentioned those two a lot today, and that's not trying to miss anyone out, but they're obviously the two obvious ones in terms of the topical nature of, of some of the press speculation, mm. but um, but yeah, they're the two. You know, that, that's the, the exact type of player that you want to keep around. You know, so um, but of course, anything has to make any any deal has to make financial sense for the club. Any deal is done by the club and not by me because there's gr really good people in those positions. Um, but of course, that type of mentality, that type of desire to want to put things right from last season, uh, I think is very important, and, and those two would typify the type of player we would want within the side next year. You need to see that from every guy from the first day of pre-season, don't you, that they're up for this fight? Yeah, I've, I've said that from, um, from the first minute, that you know, there's lots of speculation about players that might want to leave, there's lots of speculation about players that want to play in the Premier League, um, there's lots of speculation about players we might be looking to sign. So, and I understand that, and that's the nature of the game, and everyone's different, and everyone has their own choices to make, but ultimately, I want players that want to be at Stoke City. I want players that are prepared to put their bodies on the line for Stoke City next season. I want players who'll play for the team and be very unselfish in terms of their mentality. Uh, but I also want players with, with great ability, you know, of course, because you know, that's the only way you can get to where you want to be. So uh, if we can find some of those combinations, uh, then I'm sure that we'll start the season um, with a lot of optimism. I presume you'd want those players earlier than later as well. You do. I think the way the window's changed as well, particularly this season, but last season was a, a small prelude to it that the, the emergency loan market um, on window wasn't open at, uh, for the first time. So this year to move it forward, so the, the window shuts, the, uh, I think, the night before the first game of the season, which I think is good. I was an advocate for that. I think it means everyone has to work harder to get, the, get, their, um, get their cells in order in terms of their teams and their clubs. 
um, and we'll be hoping that we can do some business as quick as possible. But at the same time, you know, you can't rush some of these things. It has to make sense all round. But we're certainly working very hard already to, to try to bring some uh, exciting players and some players that want to play for Stoke into the building. Is that what you want, excitement next season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every, everyone wants that, but I think that excitement has to be blended into a team that can win. Look, you know, if I, if I had to put an order into it, I'd say, you know, winning games of football would be number one. Mm-hmm. Um, winning games of football in an exciting way would be number two, of course. Um, but there's different, I, I think there's different excitements. You know, for me, excitement comes in the form of a, a thunderous tackle. Excitement comes in the form of someone chasing back 80 yards to help the team out. Excitement comes in the form of a great bit of skill and a great finish. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's lots of different ways, um, but I think that you know we certainly want to get that commitment and ability matched up, ready for the start of the season. And ahead of the start of the season, you've got the pre-season, which is taking shape. Are you happy with where that's at right now? Yeah, absolutely. I think you know what you do at this stage is you always have to accept that there's already certain plans in place. We've tried to adjust some of those plans, so the trip to Germany won't be quite as long as it was previously. Uh, some games will get changed a little bit around that. Uh, some games will get added, but ultimately, um, you know, that when we start pre-season, it will be how we want it to look. And uh, you know, I'm really pleased with the quality of a lot of those games. Like I said, we've got a few to add, um, but we'll work in a specific way. You know, we'll work on around five and a half weeks before the season, which is what we've done previously, uh, and we'll have to make sure that. Uh, the players will have to be ready because it won't be an easy pre-season. You know, that, that a lot of the foundations are laid, in my opinion, both physically, tactically and mentally in that period. Um, so the players need to come back and they need to be ready. And, and if players aren't ready, if players have, have had a, a nice summer off and come back a little bit uh, more rounded than they usually are and struggle pre-season, then they'll find very quickly that it's difficult for them to do what we want to do. In terms of tactics and style of play, do you like to assess the guys and then think of a way to go forward or do you have something more set in stone in your mind that you want the players to fit into that? Uh, I mean historically I've tended to play 4-2-3-1-4-3-3 more often than not as a preferred um, formation because within those you know you can change one position Mm. and you can affect the formation two or three ways. Towards the end of last season we played five at the back and I enjoyed that as well so I want that flexibility but we also want a team that um, you know there's a real strong imprint of how we want to play so the players can learn that very quickly, you know, very simple methods that allows the players then to flourish, I think is important, not too, um, not too complicated for people to understand. Um, and, you know, but ultimately it's, it's, a, it's the things that go into those formations that are important for me. You know, players with desire, players with athleticism, players that want to work hard, um, players that want to win. You know, and, and like I said before, hopefully they're all talented players that want to do all of those things. It's important to have variation over a 46 game season, isn't it? Yeah, you can't be too predictable. Um, you know, you can't rely on one formation too much. I think you want a formation that, that, that allows you to change it within the game, allows you to change it uh, for different games. And I think, you know, ideally you have players that are flexible within that, that can affect the formation in a positive way. So, um, but, you know, the, game's, the game has changed to a certain degree. You know, you need... 22 players, you need players of a, of a level, you need to bring players in sometimes on a, on a midweek game mm-hmm. or when there's a, a big amount of a large volume of games, particularly in the Championship, you're talking about eight more games. Um, so it's important you have that, that group that's ready to work incredibly hard for each other. To input those ideas, are you going to need a backroom team? Are you any further along with, with confirming that? Yeah, we're making, we're making a lot of progress, I think, because it's the off-season, it's harder to do, um, but certainly... Uh, we're working hard and, and um, you know, talks initially went underway when obviously I joined um, that there's an ability to bring some of those staff members from Derby with me uh, but we'd also like to add some new ones as well you know I have a specific structure that I, that I want to achieve here uh, that involves not just football that involves some other key positions you know on the uh, on the analysis side on the sports science side um, you know for me it's important that people understand my values but also We'll work with the staff that are currently there because I'm sure there's lots and lots of good people there, lots of talented people, um, and it will be a blend of both. But yeah, we would hope to be able to confirm over the next week or so that um, the staff so we can get to work in, in, in proper. Is that structure something that you've had in place before or is it something new in your mind? It's something a little bit new. It's something a little bit new. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while. 
it's something that um, because of the club and the way it works that I've got that I want to go down that route um, you know for various reasons so um, but we will we will get that structure in place um, and when we do you know I'll be really excited about it because mm. I think there's some really good people potentially could come into the in his backroom staff. You can sense the excitement within you. This is a big challenge. It's a, it's a clean slate to many extent, the chance to mould a squad together. Is it something that you're really relishing? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that whenever, um, you know, whenever I go some, into something that's new, uh, whenever I go into that new challenge, you know, for me, um, that's the bit I enjoy the most. And, and, you know, I have no fear of, you know, some people don't like that, you know, speaking to 30 players I've never met before. I enjoy that. I enjoy getting to know people. I enjoy getting to know people around the, the club. Um, you know, I enjoy getting my teeth into that plan and that challenge. And, and um, you know, that's what I've done numerous times before. Um, and that's what I'm excited about doing here. You know, and I think with this one, you know, there, there, there probably is less less barriers in some ways in terms of you know the ability to build a squad in the way that I'd really like to do that. And, and that's the thing that excites me the most. Does that bring more pressure? Yeah, it's always pressure. I think there's, I think any any job you have, um, you know, some jobs there's far more external pressure because the need for promotion is greater. Mm. Uh, and I would say this would be in a different way, but similar to Derby, where the expectation is promotion. Um, but there's internal pressure. You know, when I'm when I was in League Two with Burton, uh, and we were mid-table. You know, I'm not happy with that. There's pressure on myself. We need to win games. It doesn't change, you know. It's about your own standards. It's about how you see pressure and how you handle that pressure. Um, and I think people, rel some people, relish under the pressure. Um, and I like to think I'm that type of person.